see I have my Colt Rody shirt on. No, I don't sell these t-shirts. This was a gift. My oldest son is an artist and he, I, I asked him to design this a few years ago and I wanted, at that time we had a trailer and we had our little Enzo and we, and look at, uh, I don't know if you can see this at all, but the road here is quilt blocks. He, he's um, quite the visionary when it comes to art. And so um, he and my daughter-in-law printed two shirts, uh, one for G and one for me. And I love them. I love them. Even though we don't have the trailer, this is what's uh, the logo that's on our um, business cards. Yeah. God, I got a hair. <laughs> um, yeah, I printed up business cards a long time ago because it, it got really difficult to, um, when someone would ask me for my email address, to tell them woolly mammoth with an IE1 at gmail.com. And so it was just easier to get the cards. Um, but today is going to be a fabulous day. It's raining here in Portland. And we are here because of our absolutely off the charts, most adorable in the world, and extremely advanced and smart new grandson. <laughs> and, um, but today um, it's raining. It, it's beautiful though, we need the rain. So we don't complain about the rain. And we literally, look like we live in a tree house because all we see out our windows is uh, the upper parts of trees and the leaves are starting to turn and oh they're going to be brilliant this next week but because of the rain we will not be hiking down to farmer's market neither of us has a desire to do that <coughs> But what we are going to do is go to Pioneer Quilts. Yes, I get to take you along. So after our little talk about here, you'll get to see Pioneer Quilts. And I swear I will really try hard to not whip the camera around too much. Yeah, that's the challenge. That's the challenge. But you know, we're good. We're all good. So this morning, what I'm doing is prepping my hexes. Um, this week on Spring Daisy um, Stitchery, the um, Hexi Flower Sal, hashtag Hexi Flower Sal, is hobbies. And so I cut out everything and brought it up here to Portland not realizing, you'll notice this kind of interesting setup here, not realizing that I didn't bring the ironing pad or um, portable ironing board, my June Taylor ironing, you know, cutting pad on one side and ironing board on the other, I didn't bring. So the mother of inventions. I'm using a placemat over a potholder. <laughs> Who said one can't? Who said one can't figure it out? You can never daunt a quilter. And then because this iron gets so hot, I'm putting it on my little plate here. But I have to share with you, uh, since I had to try to figure out how to set up an ironing um, station here, uh, I took out a placemat that I had made with bridge fabric. This was printed a few years ago. It's all the bridges in Portland. Portland is known as the bridge city because literally to get from one side of Portland to the other, gotta cross a bridge. But this, I have to share with you, this pattern is so easy and so fun and no binding. And it is on a sewing card by Valerie Wells at the Stitching Post. And you, I mean, it's cheap. I mean, it's like three bucks or something. Um, but you can um, either go online or call them and 
buy that card. And then what I did was I took a photocopy, because it's just a card. Uh, I took a photocopy of it and have that picture in my phone because whenever I'm out quilt shopping, which I know we don't get to a whole bunch, but you never know, um, I um, have the measurements or the amount of fabric, because I always forget, the amount of fabric I need to make like four placemats. And that way when I see the perfect fabric, I have it in my phone. <laughs> and then with the leftovers, let me show you the leftovers, this kind of dirty, but I made a pot, pot holder, pot holder to match my, um, my little, uh, my placemats. And I love to give these as gifts. I just love to give them the gift. Plus, it's so fun to use fabric. So I've done, I've done this, uh, setup and I've already prepped one block. Let's see. And so here's, you can kind of see that it's guitars for G. Yeah, so that's for him. And then I'll be prepping the other block, but I want to share a couple of things with you before I do that. One is I finished binding the, the uh, Leo's quilt with a little help from my little elf worker. And I decided to do this awesome thing. I'm going to pick up a Micron Black permanent um, pen, you know, the kind that uh, we used to write on our labels, because I noticed on the back of here, the fabric I used on the back has this wonderful pencil, pencil print, and there's all kinds of fun things written on the pencils. There's all these messages called like, a stitch in time saves nine. You know, um, sticks and stones. Uh, let's see, textile shop. There's all Sacramento Railroad. There's all just all kinds of fun things written on it, little messages. But what I decided is I was going to carry this quilt around a little bit and have different family members write a message in one of the blank pencils. And then there'll be like a secret message for him all over the back of the quilt. Don't you think? And you could do that, and you don't need this pencil fabric, but wouldn't that be a great um, baby quilt? You know, hopefully he'll drag it to college and stuff, but um, yeah, so the black binding was the perfect call. It was the perfect call for this. Yeah, so I am really excited about that. I just have to pick up a, I don't have a Micron pen with me, so, but since I'm going to Pioneer Quilts, I'm sure that they have something. Or I could just go to the store and get one of those indelible ink pens. The other thing I wanted to share with you, uh, and I think I probably shared this before, in fact, I probably made it on Quilt Roadies before, but um, I saw it in, it's such a great grandma idea, you know, but here's this baby quilt. I made this for my oldest grandson when he was a baby, and he would come stay here. Um, but this is a rag quilt, um, and the best way to, and that's why I saved those um, I told you when I have scrap batting left over, I cut them automatically into like six or eight inch squares and just save stacks of them because then I can do these rag quilts and um, you just take up two pieces of um, flannel with batting in between and then you sew the squares together with the seam facing up and then you just clip it with um, these special kind of spring scissors. Um, but what I love that I did was I sewed little uh, clothesline loops into the binding when I was sewing the binding on. And then I attached little baby toys, little baby toys in with the binding, see? 
in the back because I used mostly all the same fabric. It's just squares of the same bright fabric and then the front is just fun, fun, fun with all the toys hanging off the edge. And so when he takes a nap, he has a cozy blanket and he has something to distract him to sleep. Oh, I just thought I'd share that with you. Yeah. So I'm going to prep my next, my next um, Hexies, my second one. And my second one, I used this kind of zipper stripe fabric. I'm trying to see if I get these all right. Yeah. I spent the better part of two days looking at all the comments from the previous uh, uh, two videos ago where I had asked what you were reading, what you were eating, what you were doing. Oh my gosh, you know, if you guys ever need a, a time to, um, you know, if you're lonely, you've got to go back and read the comments. I mean, the world is small and everyone is so wonderful and it was so much fun. My reading list is off the charts. Yeah, off the charts. I'm using my little foam. What, is there a name on here? Let's see. Well, it's made in Japan. And it says push on it because you got to squeeze it a little bit. But Sue Spargo uses this, and I know I know the Stitch and Post, um, the Stitching Post um, sells it. And um, I know that Sue Spargos uh, uses this a lot for um, what she does too. So there's there's a couple places you can get these, but you just kind of gently squeeze it a little bit, and and then. Uh, it puts a little bit of starch water on the outside edge. There we go. So I really had fun reading all of that. Oh my gosh, my reading list is like off the charts. I, I am going to be busy, busy, busy for reading. I've decided that's what how I need to get through the end of this year is um, there has been so much so much to worry about so much to be sad about we lost three young girls uh, in a one car accident uh, it's you know they were they hadn't even graduated from high school yet. It breaks your heart. It breaks your heart for the moms and dads and siblings and family that... But, um, yeah. So we have to find ways to survive these times, don't we? It was kind of fun to read what everybody was eating for breakfast. <laughs> Or not eating. I especially like the extreme brownie. I don't know. That's an awesome way to start a day. <laughs> That's so fun. A little zipper. wait to go to Pioneer Quilts. I called yesterday just to make sure so I wouldn't be disappointed. You know, I didn't want to get there and be disappointed that um, they weren't open. So I called ahead of time. 
and uh, it's been so long. I swear it's been over a year since I've been there. And, um, but what I remember is they had the most awesome, awesome, awesome uh, wool selection. And they used to have, I think they probably still have, someone who dyes it for them. Yeah. I better move this up here onto the placement, onto the pot holder. <laughs> that iron can get hot. Yeah, but I, I laughed and I cried as I re read through the, through the um, comments because it you learn a lot about life and living by how um, other people are, are choosing to go through their um, life during this time, you know. And some people are doing it all alone, and some people are finding ways to. Um, Shelter with family. So that's been kind of fun to read that. Um, it, I didn't, you know, I was thinking about, G and I were talking about how um, he went out walking on Sabi Island yesterday. And um, he said there were still a lot of car, the Sabi Island is on the Columbia River. And the Columbia River, um, runs from the Pacific Ocean into the port of Portland. And so there wasn't much ship traffic. For those of you that have been around a while on Instagram, you saw last year how much ship traffic goes by that island when we were camped out there. And um, so there wasn't much ship traffic, but the... Um, The lot where they those ships from overseas drop all the import cars um, was like three quarters full. So uh, it makes you wonder. Well, they're still ordering cars. And then one of you commented that you were making a cross country trip in a car because you weren't comfortable yet with the flying. And I'm not comfortable with the flying either, but it made me realize, oh, that's why people are um, still, just like people are moving, they're upgrading their cars and trying to figure out how to travel more comfortably. So car sales have been up apparently. This one's going to be really cute. This is the sewing one, you know, because it's hobbies right now. And so um, I chose uh, this cute little scissors and strawberry pin, pin cushion and needles. I keep saying I'm about ready to throw this set of hexies away, but I keep eking out another set from them. <laughs> A little bit on the cheap side I am. I was amazed in the comments how many um, books I had not read. Uh, so I'm kind of excited about that. I spent as I was doing, answering the comments, I um, was also getting on my library list and, and requesting different books. So. Oh, that is gonna be so freaking cute. I started thinking about the long winter ahead of us. You know, I we 
will uh, not be traveling the first half of the winter. And so, um, but at the same time, when you're at home, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be going to Christmas parties or Thanksgiving with family or um, any of that stuff. So, um, it'll be a different kind of winter. I think I need to get my Tannenbaum quilt out because I think it'll be fun to you know, I love making Halloween quilts, but um, I'm thinking that um, there won't be a new Halloween quilt this year, but boy, I can see myself doing some Christmas table runners, and although I have to say when I was looking on I think it was Instagram. I saw um, Stacy West from Buttermilk Basin. There was a wool mat with a jack-o'-lantern that had a pirate's patch. Yeah, that's really cute. Yeah. And I have been enjoying candy corn more than I have in previous years. <laughs> Although I like the candy pumpkins the best. Oh, this is going to be cute. Have you guys gone on Instagram and seen um, the Yorkshire Boys uh, new studio? It's a destination. <laughs> it's a destination. When he showed the view, I don't know, I, I had this vision. Uh, somehow I had this vision of it being in a loft. I don't know why. And um, but when he showed the view out of his um, window of the studio, I couldn't even. It was like, oh my gosh, I would want to live there. No wonder he's such a good long arm quilter. It's like, ugh. I love seeing people create their own life and make a success. And so yesterday when my grandson was here for the day, we walked down to Whole Foods, and my regular Roots uh, guy was down outside of Whole Foods. Roots is a, um, a local street newspaper that's printed about um, stuff going on on the street, stuff going on um, uh, in terms of social justice, and, and a whole bunch of different things. But it is uh, printed and dispensed in support of um, of local people, and so the street roots roots dispenser <laughs> they um, they buy the paper for like twenty five dollar uh, twenty twenty. 25 cents um, a paper and then they sell it for a dollar you know and you you used to see them almost every other corner but 
um, yeah, with COVID, that downtown area kind of went um, kaput. And so there wasn't as many uh, of those people. But uh, my regular guy was outside of Whole Foods, so I was happy to buy a paper. And I always give him uh, much more than the paper costs because I know it's hard work to stand out there all the time. I was sad. I mean, the, they said in the paper, they said in the news that um, Portland, the city of Portland is now working towards revitalizing downtown, which oh, I'm so happy they're doing it because as we walked um, down uh, to Whole Foods, I mean, places were closed that have been here forever, you know, but without people coming downtown, um, business was off, so, but, you know, they'll work at it. I mean, New York City, if you look at my girlfriend, um, Ariane, on the other hand, uh, her YouTube channel, um, New York came back after 9-11, you know, it comes back different, but it comes back. You know, it just takes a while. Okay, this is too freaking cute if I do say so. This is the center block here. Yeah, so if you need a quick um, but beautiful Christmas present or Thanksgiving gift or whatever, um, Valerie's, uh, Valerie's placemat um, card is, I mean, it has been worth every penny. I took the streetcar for the first time yesterday. I had my mask. Everybody was wearing a mask. And I didn't touch anything inside. <laughs> I stood up. I didn't sit on any seat. <laughs> I thought that was very brave of me to, to go there. <laughs> and it was okay. I mean, it wasn't crowded at all either. So that, that. Um, that makes it, yeah. Okay, oh, that is so cute. Well, let me show you. I will, I'll move this one. one of these out so you can see it better. I'm addicted to these hexies. In fact, I think I'm going to start a second hexie project that is just with prim colors uh, and just make blocks and see what happens. But let's see. Let me see if I can. Can you see that? That's cute. The zipper goes all the way around, and then there's scissors and, and a strawberry pin cushion. <laughs> So good. Okay, so stay tuned because upcoming next is a walk about Pioneer Quilts. Well, I made it. I made it to Pioneer Quilts and I'm going to go ahead and take you inside. I will try to be a good videographer, but no guarantees. But you'll see some pretty things. So let's get going.
over here. <laughs> Isn't this beautiful? Oh my gosh. No, I'm just enjoying myself. <laughs> oh, here's some of Jen's jolly fabrics. Or lolly fabrics, I should call them. And then look at all the floss. You need floss? It's here. Oh, that's in my UFO pile. That is a cute bag. Is there a class going on? Um, on 1800s club. Oh, they usually are outside, but let's throw it out today. Okay. You see what I'm talking about? This is worth the stop and the trip. This panel, this quilt, how cute is that? Everything's in this cute box.
Yep, and there is all that gorgeous wool. Uh. Oh my gosh, look at this panel. There's a whale and a bear. Gonna have to have some of that. Nature, nurture, nature. Oh, definitely gonna have to have some of that. I love all these grays. And then a ton of buttermilk basin mats. And full kits here. Is this not fun? For those of you who want to start wool but are, you know, daunted by the amount of wool you might need, call up Pioneer Quilts because they have these little kits with just the amount you need in it. And the wool. Oh my gosh, the wool. I'm definitely going to be picking up some of that. Uh, and this is why I came. Look at all that wool. And they'll cut uh, the size you need out of a piece. Look at that. Bunny Hill. Oh, Nutmeg House. That is cute. How cute is this? That is really cute. Huh. Kimberbell Love Notes Fabric Kit. Oh, I've heard some of you are working on that. This is in a historic farmhouse, and so it's in several segments. There's, um, used to be Christmas, Halloween, Japanese topes, and sail fabrics down this hallway. And they're having a group meeting. They normally would meet outside, but it's raining today, and so they're spread out in the classroom area. Oh, so they moved the Christmas fabrics in here and the Japanese topes. And then um, there's the Halloween, Halloween. Oh, this is the Halloween room. Oh, we love this. Oh. That stitcher never left, huh? Oh. That is cute going to get me some of that. Look at that. Okay, I'm going to do a little shopping and then I'll get back to you.
There really is something for everyone here. You want yeah. modern, you want primitive, you want textiles, you want grays. So you definitely want to be adding this place to your list to visit when you come to the Portland area. Oh, so many fun things. Okay, so we're heading out. Later. Oh. This is a lovely historic farm in the middle of a city. I'll show you um, what I purchased when I get home. <laughs> See you back at the condo. Well, I'm back from shopping at Pioneer Quilts, and I thought I'll give you a little peek of my tree house here. See what I was talking about? Those trees are starting to change colors. Oh, and see Silas put uh, those stickum bats on the windows <laughs> for Halloween. But I wanted to show you what I got, okay? It was so much fun. I, it had been over a year since I'd been shopping there. So naturally, as I showed you, they're wool. And they cut it to whatever size you need. So I, I don't know why I chose this particular one, but, and I don't know if you can see how really lovely it is, but it is um, a hand-dyed gray color. And it was calling to me. And so I bought a quarter yard, um, which is like that. I'm sure I have something that, that will need that perfect shade of gray. And then this kit... You know, I really didn't need a kit, but I thought, I'll buy the kit because I want the pattern. And the model was so cute, and it would make such cute gifts. And it's this little Santa hat pin cushion. I just think that'd be so cute. And you could personalize it, and it is adorable. Adorable. So I got that. And this fabric, because we love Halloween fabric. Let me tell you who this is by. So when you call up Pioneer Quilts, you tell them you saw it on Quilt Roadies, of course. And this is um, Something Wicked by Something Something <laughs> for Clothworks. Wait till you see this. It's a panel, but the, the top edge of the panel has this awesome crow fabric. And then look at this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Isn't that amazing? I couldn't pass it up. After all, it is October. Because I'm on the hexy kick. 
got a fat quarter of this because look at those hedgehogs. And they'll fit inside a hexi. Yeah. So I got a fat quarter. The thing about the hexes is that it makes you look at fabric entirely differently. Entirely different. Back on the Halloween kick. And the hexes. This was screaming hexes. And it is called Scaredy Cat by Debbie Mum. Boy, I haven't heard that name in a while. This is great. Oh, let me put it this way so you can see. Look at those. The choices boggle the mind. And then finally, I mean, when I bought this piece, the gal that was cutting it says, do you have, know what you're going to do with this? That isn't how I buy fabric. I rarely buy fabric because I know what I'm doing. What I do is buy fabric and then I suddenly get an idea. <laughs> but this, I bought the panel. And you're going to know why you're going to want this panel. I hope I can show it to you all, all of the whole panel, but it's that nurture nature, and look at those. Plant a seed of love. Oh my gosh, look at this tree. I love the earth. You better call fast, because I'm thinking that this is going to go fast. And I will put their link in the description down below and who knows what that this this panel will end up in but oh my gosh is does it ever scream an awesome quilt so that was it i was really good but i feel totally satisfied and now that I know what they have, there's things that I probably will get on another trip. Have a great day. I hope you're safe, your weather's good, you're healthy, you're wearing your masks, and you're stitching. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. And be sure to like and subscribe on Quilt Roadies.